Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. Today, we are going to be previewing SummerSlam that is happening this Saturday. You heard right, it is happening this Saturday, August 21st, 2021 at 8 p.m. in Nevada. And you know, with SummerSlam, with the big four pay-per-views, we have our all of our best wrestling experts on here first we have mr consistent jacob mason how you doing today sir fantastic buddy how are you i'm doing well thank you we have the captain of the l7c byron mitchell how are you doing today sir oh it's been a great day i'm excited to preview SummerSlam. and today we have a new person making his debut on the l7c podcast courtesy of our captain byron mitchell eric moeller how are you doing today sir much like the cream, I am rising to the top. I am ready to discuss SummerSlam with these fine gentlemen. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Eric, it's your fir- before we review a sub- uh, preview SummerSlam, <laughs> it's your first time on the L7C podcast. Yes. Give us a little bit about who you are, what you do, what got you into wrestling, favorite wrestlers, and then we'll go to talk about SummerSlam. All right. Uh, really quickly, my name is Eric. As I said earlier, uh, I've been a wrestling fan for pretty much my whole life, as long back as I can remember. Even though it was banned in my household, I still found ways to watch it. Um, favorite wrestlers, you got Eddie, you got Macho Man, you got CM Punk, you got Trish Stratus. Um, the Attitude Era was very informative uh, for a young man growing into adulthood for me. <laughs> uh, and I've just always been appreciative of wrestling. Uh, so I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to discuss a uh, passion of mine with you guys. And if you guys are interested, you can always find more stuff that I do online. I am part of the Ramble On About Movies podcast, part of the Off the Rails Network. Wow. Gave his favorite wrestlers, plugged his stuff all in a couple. You guys told me, you know, I got to be ready. I stepped my game up for you guys. That That is true. I was nervous when you were going through your favorite wrestlers. I thought you were going to get his band. This. <laughs> <laughs> thought, you, thought you were going to say some names that our mom and pop podcast couldn't survive if some people are like, oh, they like so-and-so. He's, you know, but we won't say his name, but it's all good. All right, let's get right into SummerSlam. First off, it's on a Saturday. Um, I know reason being Manny Pacquiao is going to be fighting that night too at the mm-hmm. T-Mobile arena and WWE is planning to have SummerSlam end before that card's main event. So uh, the matches might be short and, you know, COVID, they are going to be doing the mass inside for the fans. We'll see how that goes. Uh, currently we have eight matches listed. Nikki, for Charlotte versus Rhea, Cena Reigns, Bobby versus Goldberg, the Usos versus the Mysterios, Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, Edge, Chris, S and Edge and Christian. Shout out to Christian <laughs> for winning <laughs> the Impact title. Edge Impact versus Seth. Uh, Sheamus versus Damian, then Drew versus Jinder. So we're going to go through all those matches, give our thoughts, predictions. But we're going to start off, though, with a match that we've been saying is going to happen for months, but it's officially not yet. But it's going to probably happen on Monday. RK bro, Randy and Riddle versus Omos and AJ. Uh, it's probably going to be for the tag team championship. Uh, we're going to start off with the new guy, Eric. Who, I guess, who do you want to win this match? Who do you think is going to win this match? What do you expect out of this match? First who I want to win is AJ and Almos. Okay. Who I expect to win is AJ and Almos. And what I think is going to happen is because the story they're really going to be telling is the breaking up the RK bros. It's going to be can Riddle trust Randy? Because at the end of Monday's episode where, you know, you got the RKO, it's not to break up the RK bros. It's to teach him that lesson of you can't trust me. But Riddle, being the ever-loving guy, just wants to trust his bro. Okay. So I think AJ and almost just keep rolling because WWE Vince loves his big boy, so he wants to protect almost. So oh Jesus! <laughs> right. So we're gonna keep that uh, tag team going for a while. Jacob, who you got, man? Who do you want to win? Who's gonna win? What do you think of it? I uh, I want RK bro, and <laughs> I'm gonna take RK bro. I think we said that in, like podcast or two ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Basically, they're we're just waiting around for RK Bro to take the titles off Omos and AJ. So I think that's going to happen. Byron, who you got in this one? I also have RK Bro because, like, 
Jacob said, they've been building this story since they first started as a tag team, that they're going to take the tag team titles off of AJ and Almost. Uh, so I expect them to do it at SummerSlam, but Vince Logic would probably be AJ and Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I think Eric said it. He does like to protect his big boys and Almost, but that's why AJ Styles is going to be taking the pin off an RKO when he tries to do the phenomenal forearm. We've seen it before. It's going to happen again. I think RK Bro is going to win because that means they're going to have RK Bro with tag team title t-shirts, extra merchandise. So I think with that, I think that's RK, a fair point. I think that's RK, a solid point. Thank you. I think RK Bro is going to take it in. Match hasn't been made official yet, but by the time you guys listen to this, the match will probably be official. So let's talk about some matches that are going to be official. And Byron, let's just rip the Band-Aid off. Nikki, We're starting with this one first. Nikki, almost a superhero, the champ, Money in the Bank cash in versus Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. Triple threat match for the Raw Women's Championship on previous L7C episodes. We have talked about Charlotte and Rhea and Oscar was in that thing, too, where they were doing a round robin of facing each other for this title. And that was back. Summers, the SummerSlams in August. This was back in WrestleMania. So it's been months of Rhea and Charlotte. Now you're inserting Nikki. Almost a superhero. Byron, what's going to happen in this match, man? Who are you taking? I am taking Nikki A.S.H. to win. Because, I mean, why not? She's an up-growing star. She's had a phenomenal promos around Royal Rumble WrestleMania season. Um, they put the belt on her, um, let her cash in her Money in the Bank contract. So I want her to win. Now, who's probably going to win is probably Charlotte because Vince loves Charlotte and Charlotte loves to be champion. So it will probably be Charlotte, but I am rooting for Nikki, almost a superhero. Jacob, who do you got, man? Oh, I got Charlotte. I don't want Charlotte. I don't want anyone to actually win the match. To be completely honest, oh, why? <laughs> I just don't care. I don't care about the never-ending saga of Charlotte and Oscar and Rhea Ripley. I really don't care about Nikki, almost superhero. I hate that. I'm I'm not a fan. So yeah, um, you know, let's go Charlotte because Charlotte's going to win. We've been calling that for months, so I'm just sticking to what we've been saying for months. So, um, Eric, since this is your first time on here. How do you feel about? Charlotte, like Flair. She is a great wrestler. I am just tired of Vince literally forcing her in our face all the time, like always giving her a title, always giving her the main event, always giving her this. Like, she, like, when she was gone for a little bit, uh, from WrestleMania on for a little bit because she had COVID, you know, I was like, oh, it's great to see her back because, you know, loss makes the heart grow fonder, stuff like that. But it's the same thing. Like when they gave her the title within two months of her coming back and she lost it three days later. It's just one of those things where she, I know the story they want. They want Charlotte versus Becky when Becky comes back, but they don't need the title on in that one. So for this one, I am going with Nikki A.S.H. Because uh, again, as you were saying earlier about RK Bros merchandise, Nikki A.S.H. merchandise. Kids are going to buy it. <laughs> That's that's true. And I would also say with the Charlotte thing of her being gone back then too. Also, that doctor did misdiagnose her of being pregnant. Mm-hmm. Which God, I want to know who that doctor is and if they have a job. But <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes I feel like these recent title things with Charlotte's because like, I, I, sorry, our doctors thought you were pregnant, but you weren't. But I, this is tough. Well, first. Rhea ain't winning, so she's out. Nope. She's gonna. She's getting the pinfall. She is getting pinned. So here's the problem. So if Nikki Cross pins Rhea Ripley, Charlotte can say that she didn't have the one-on-one thing, and then we continue. If Charlotte taps out Rhea, Nikki Cross, Nikki A S H can say the same thing. So. And this is the last like big, big pay per view until like Survivor Series. But I'm going to go upset, which is crazy saying the champ winning is an upset. I'm going to go Nikki ASH 
pinning. You need, every good WWE pay per view has one good happy ending to make the fans happy for a title match. This is going to be it, I think. Oh, well, that's bad news then. <laughs> <laughs> I think she'll pin Rhea, and then her and Charlotte will have a Extreme Rules match that will be in Columbus, Ohio, in September. Throwing that plug out. But all mm-hmm. right, next let's we're just gonna rip band aids off. Another champion match: Bobby Lashley, the champ, with MVP versus Goldberg. Goldberg came back, challenged Bobby Lashley. To me, that just means Brock Lesnar still doing Brock Lesnar things and they couldn't get him for this match or maybe saving that for WrestleMania. Who knows? Jacob, we know you love Bill Goldberg. Big fan. <laughs> so who Big do you fan. got? Lashley, Goldberg, who you got? Honestly, this is a kind of a toss-up when you think about it because Bill Goldberg is Bill Goldberg and Vince McMahon will Vince McMahon. So, honestly, Going into this, I think the biggest question, does this match last longer than five minutes? No. No, I, I, I don't, no, know. I don't think so. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Bobby Lashley just because I absolutely hate Goldberg. And, you know, <laughs> going with the almighty. Eric, who do you have? But really, this? it just comes down to, is Vince going to Vince? Is Vince going to mm. Vince? That's a new verb. Is Vince going to Vince? Sure. Uh, Vincing. <laughs> I think the Almighty wins, but I think uh, Goldberg gets his seat back when his son Spears MVP after the match. Oh, but my other bold oh. prediction for this match is this is where we see the cash in. Oh, Biggie mm. comes down, cashes in on Bobby because you know Kofi and Xavier could get the revenge, and then that's when Biggie can come in and cash in. Okay. Mm. That's that. Again, this is another possibility of the send send the fans home happy. Then you have the new day all back on Raw. Yep. And you can run that. How do you feel, Eric, about like Bill and I mean he's definitely an older guy. And <laughs> Jacob said it's a toss-up because anytime Goldberg is against someone, when we did our Royal Rumble preview, mm-hmm. we were split 50-50 because we half of us really thought he was gonna beat Drew and the other people picked Drew, but they're like, it's Goldberg, because we've seen him, you know. Kill Kevin right. Owens, kill Bray Wyatt. Like, how do you feel about Bill? I, it's one of those things where the act has this, the nostalgia is going to run off eventually, going to run out of fuse. It, like, SummerSlam, I want to say two years ago, this is the one where he went up against Dolph Ziggler, right? And I destroyed think that was, him. Yeah, that was the best use of Bill Goldberg. Mm-hmm. You don't put him in a championship match. Like, it made sense for the Kevin Owens as you could have. Goldberg Lesnar at WrestleMania, which is probably the best match those guys have had in a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two big boys slapping me to quote Big E. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it's just, you can't keep uh, having Bill Goldberg be a challenger. You should have him either come in and crush a mid card guy, or you have, because it's not, the rub isn't there anymore. Like Drew McIntyre didn't get better because of his match at Royal Rumble against Goldberg. Yeah. Like fans didn't like, oh, I wasn't sure about McIntyre before. Now I'm sold. No, that rub isn't there. So I mean, I I can understand the fear of them giving it to Goldberg because this totally feels like something Vince would do, but I don't think it's gonna be that. I think it's gonna be almighty wins, but then watch out for the cash. Byron. I so outside of Vince logic, Bobby Lashley should win because I mean he's been a dominant champion. Uh you mm-hmm. saw what he did to Kofi at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Absolutely destroyed him. I think you need to ride that um and just have him destroy uh Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Um so I want Bobby Lashley to win. I'm going to you know what last time I bet against Bobby it didn't work out for me. So I'm gonna say Bobby's gonna win too. But I Vince Logic, it's always that possibility of Goldberg winning. Well, speaking of Vince Logic, I oh, I guess we're going to rub this Band-Aid off, too. Going to plug <laughs> um, Almighty Bobby Lashley, Stone Cold Steve Austin. That was his latest episode, so I hope you wouldn't put Bobby on Stone Cold's episode just to lose the next day. That would kind of suck. Um, I mean, I'm a huge Bobby fan. Goldberg 
I agree with Eric wholeheartedly. Dude needs to not be in the title matches, but just killing other people. But I'm taking Bobby. I do like the cash in idea, but I'm saying Bobby now, when it comes to our Pick'em Championship, WWE Pick'em titles, which we do do for the L7C, I'm afraid Goldberg's going to spear his ass and kill him and win. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to, and I'll, and I'll be very sad, but Bobby Lashley, do it for the crew. <laughs> For the crew, uh, let's talk. Let's go to another championship match. You got part two thirds of the bloodline, the Usos, Jay and Jimmy versus Mysterios, Ray and Dominic for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. Um, Eric, I'm gonna ask you for the first one. Do you think the Usos should have won the title? You know, after which one was it, Jimmy, who came back with the DUI again, or is that mm-hmm. Jay? No, it was Jimmy. It was Jimmy, yeah, because Jimmy's yeah. had his multiple ones. How did you feel about, in a normal job, you can't have a DUI on Friday right. and then get a raise on Sunday? So, <laughs> right, which is weird. But God. Jacob will say, look who they're related to. The Rock. Well, it's, <laughs> it's storyline purposes. Mm-hmm. It, I get that part of it, but yeah, if there's anyone else, they probably would have gotten released along with Brady Rock right, at that same time. I mean, I agree. But who you th- who you got in this one? Usos versus uh, Mysterios. Usos, because they want to keep that storyline going, and I mean it's one of the best things on WWE pro- TV programming right now. And also another thing, future storytelling you could use this as a moment to split up Dominique and Ray. You can have them fight. Hopefully not for custody or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, this would be perfect. Dominic can be like, it's time to honor my father, Eddie, and just lay out Ray. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's on a SummerSlam that, anniversary. That was the wildest SummerSlam, a ladder match for the custody paperwork. <laughs> like me working where I work, I'm like, that is not how that works. <laughs> you kidding? You kidding? And the match itself was crazy. Like the bumps Ray was taking in that match. I'm surprised he's still wrestling at this age. You have to take bumps like that. You're fighting for custody of your kid. <laughs> Jacob, and, Vicky who you- missed the, and Vicky missed the spot. Jesus Christ. Jacob, who you got, man? Bloodline or the Mysterios? Uh, Bloodline, yeah. It's got to be It's got to be the Usos. I mean, Eric kind of nailed on the head there. The storyline, why does it make no sense for the Usos to, or for the Mysterios to win. And he's right, because they had that moment where Ray kind of cost Dominic the last match they had against the Usos was on mm-hmm. SmackDown a couple weeks ago or whatever it was. But yeah, no, you watch. This is the start of the breakup of the Mysterios. It'll, call me, it'll come to at Mania, and it'll be like Ray's last match. It'll be against the Sun. I mean, I'm going to go nice, quick, Usos. Byron, who you got? Usos, because... It's just because it's the Usos. <laughs> I, there's really no reason. <laughs> it's just it's the Usos. I mean, they're a great tag team. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're one of the best tag teams out there. I mean, they deserve the titles. It's just like you said. I can't get drunk on a Friday and get promoted two days later. Right. <laughs> and the fact the world knew too. Like, there's reports. And what are y'all gonna do? No suspension. We're just gonna. Right. He's gonna get a raise. Titles. Like, I don't even think he lost that on SmackDown the day of. He like, was there. And yeah. then Roman made the thing like you. I don't even need to get started how I've saved you. <laughs> like, it's wild, man. But you know, Miss Gusos. Well, uh, let's keep let's go with this other championship match, which a guy who hasn't defended his title in like 20 years, Sheamus, United States champ, going against Damian Priest, Byron. Who you got in this one? I don't know. Last time I went against Sheamus. He won the title at WrestleMania, which he shouldn't have. And you were not happy. I was not happy. Um, <laughs> well, a wipe in the uh, face. <laughs> no. it off the glass. <laughs> Sheamus shouldn't have won that match. It should have been Riddle. It made no sense. It still makes no sense. <laughs> I don't... Uh, I want to say Damian Priest. I want to. But it's probably going to be Sheamus. I'm just going to say Seamus. I don't, uh, they're, yeah, the Seamus. <laughs> Eric, who you got? Uh, do we know if Bad Buddy's going to be showing up? Because 
No, we, I think we do not know. Said, this Damien Priest is on the, you know, he's on the mm-hmm. escal. He's escalating here, so he's on the escalator. He's going up. So yeah, obviously it's going to be Damien Priest. Going to put him mid title belt on him. Gives him the feuds with Johnny Drip Drip and uh, the Miz. Johnny Drip Drip. <laughs> I mean, Sha- shame. Hey, all respect to Sheamus. I mean, I like the dude. He's he almost had his career end, I think, three years ago because of a neck injury or something like that. Yeah. And he's look, he's in the best shape of his life. He's still going strong. But Damian Priest this time. Jacob. Uh it should be Damian Priest, but I'm going with uh Seamus on this one. Just because I think they're gonna prolong this storyline. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna be a one and done pay-per-view thing. I think you're gonna see this be like three pay-per-views before this feud is over. I want to go Damien. I really do, but I feel like there's going to be a newly healed Miz interference in this because they've still been dragging Damien versus Johnny Drip and the Miz and how to keep dragging that feud then for them to ruin Damien's highest thing of his career. But you know what? Since we already have two for Shane, I'm going to go Damien. Miz, don't screw this up for me. <laughs> Let Damien win. Let him get that title. Whenever Bad Bunny's in concert or whatever tour, because they posted his tour at WrestleMania, Damien can show up with the U.S. title. There you go. Now, will I put that on my pick sheet? Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next pay-per-view is uh, Extreme Rules, right? Yep, yes. in Columbus. So they could easily have a really nice uh, like six-man ladder match for the U.S. title with Sheamus, Johnny, Miz, uh, Damien, Roberto, and Ricochet. Roberto, I forgot he was on the show. Yeah, I'm he surprised he. Him. I'm surprised he hasn't been chopped. Well, give it time. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm surprised we haven't been cut. Well, I, I don't. I Vince heard some of the things, some of the rants that have happened on here. He, we would have been cut a long time ago, <laughs> but. This one, which I kind of feel bad for the guy because I felt like he was carrying the company during prime COVID. Drew McIntyre versus Jinder Mahal, and he has his little stooges with him, just a singles match. Jacob, who you got here, Drew or your best friend, Jinder? Dude, we're going gender. You don't hinder the gender. (laughs) (laughs) You don't hinder the gender, okay. Oh, all right. Oh, 100%. I'm going Jinder Mahal. Absolutely. Clean? Probably, probably, or yeah, you know, no, no, because he's gonna have the, I don't know, the two stooges. He's got the million dollar arm, whatever the hell his name is, uh, or whatever. Yeah, they'll probably interfere. I don't know. I'm going with gender just because. Does Drew really need the win? No, no. Bingo. Eric, who you got? Oh, don't hinder gender. It's gender all the way. <laughs> Oh lord! This guy gets it. Now it's gonna be. It's not gonna be clean. It's gonna be dirty. But again, here's my reasoning. Right, you got. I know it's weird to say long term storytelling with WWE, but hear me (laughs) out. Because Drew doesn't need the win. Right. He could eat that loss because I think he's gonna be the one who gets drafted to the SmackDown. Eventually, he'll be the one who takes the title off of Roman Reigns because that's a money match at like Survivor Series if they want to do it that way, or they could wait till Royal Rumble. No, I I do like the Drew thing because I know we have talked about Drew going there. I know there was a rumor that was going to be Roman versus Drew at a WrestleMania if superstar Mm -hmm. Dwayne can't take off. But yeah, I mean, it's not mm. because the draft is in three months in October. So I can't wait for that to piss this podcast off. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know how you have a draft when you're passing the same 10 names. Well. Miz and Morrison, you go draft the the people you let go? Probably. That's going to be surprises. Another roster. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember when we when we thought we were going to have a slow week and we didn't? We're like, dude, we can make a whole wrestling promotion with the people who've been let go. Yeah, easily. yeah. The past two years, you could easily make an. Well, look at AEW. The- <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, Samoa Joe's going to be my champion until he just randomly came back on a Tuesday. I was like. Well, he ruined my podcast plans, but okay. <laughs> Byron, who you got in this? Drew versus Jinder 
a battle of the old 3MB, whatever the hell. That, where is, uh, where's Heath Slater to be the special guest referee? Dude's an impact living his best life. That's right. Also, I think he's recovering from like rotator cuff surgery or something. Ugh. Ugh. Mm. That's rough. Um, you know what? Gender. Why not? Yeah. Don't hit me with the gender. Wow. Oh, oh, shoot. And it won't be clean because, yes, yeah, it's yeah. Stooges, Veer, and Shanky. We were supposed to get this during the Thunderdome era, but Jinder got hurt, so. Well, I guess this is going to be like the second biggest win in Jinder's career, so I guess I'll go Jinder, too. Wow. Oh, the Pajabi prison match against Randy Orton. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> I still can't believe I live in a life where Jinder Mahal was WWE freaking champion. Yep. What a time. Five months. Five, Five months. That's wild. Yeah. Beat Shinsuke. This, this clean. wild. Clean. Clean. <laughs> clean. Well, here, here I think are the three, well, especially the main event we know is one of the biggest matches of all time, but these three I think are super big. Uh, Edge. Man, they have a clean picture for Edge on Wikipedia. Jeez. Edge <laughs> versus Seth freaking Rollins. He's not the, for, a.k.a. formerly the Monday Night Messiah, a.k.a. Burn It Down. Byron. This is your definition of a dream match to people who haven't had a one-on-one. Who do you have in this match? I don't know. <laughs> I've been thinking about this one ever since they teased this match, ever since they announced it. Seth Rollins, the man who almost ended Edge's career a second time. Um, it's a good, it's great storytelling, um, by the way. Um, I just like the buildup they've had before this match. Um, I th- want to say Edge because he hasn't won since he won the Royal Rumble. I just want to. He beat think. Randy. He beat Randy Orton at WrestleMania. Well, I'm, I'm saying this Royal oh, Rumble. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't won since this Royal Rumble. Um, he lost to that Triple Threat um, at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just lost that match against Roman. So I want to say Edge. Um, he picks up this win. Uh, a feel good storyline uh, that comes to an end, but Vince loves Seth. So I want Edge to win. It'll probably be Seth because Edge really doesn't need a win. Not saying that Seth does, but Seth hasn't really been doing anything since that shitty Rey Mysterio storyline. Uh, oh so I'm going to say Seth. Jacob. First off, uh, your face. We talk about the Seth Rollins Rey Mysterio storyline. <laughs> very, very enjoyable. Um, I'm going with uh, I'm going to go with Seth basically because there's no reason for Edge to win. There's this is going to got to pull Seth into the Roman storyline, so Seth needs to win more than Edge. So I'm going with Seth. It's uh, Eric. Uh, like Byron, I've been thinking long and hard in this one, guys. I'll be happy with either outcome. If Edge wins, I'm happy. Seth wins, I'm happy. Because the buildup for this match is great. So, who I think should win is Edge, but I, who I think will win is Seth freaking Raw. You know, I want Edge to win so that he could spear Seth so hard that Seth takes time off so him and Becky could switch. Because, I mean, they need Be- the women need Becky well. You can't keep relying on the four horsemen, but they need Becky more than we need Seth. So, you know, switch baby diaper duties. But Seth Rollins is going to curb stomp Edge twice and call it a day. And then as he'll be probably wrestling Roman Reigns at Survivor Series or whatever, depending on the draft for the title. So, but I would love Edge to win, though, because, you know, his pop, when his music goes off, everyone goes crazy. So. Uh, his pop is. Oh, that's amazing. Well, here's the other thing. They could keep, they could easily keep this story alive for at least enough storyline going for another paper. <laughs> that's true, because we don't know how long Edge is mm-hmm. going to be going. Like, there's been nothing about his contract or anything like that. So that is, that's true. Um, Next one up, which they might steal the show once again. Bianca Belair as the champ this time, going against the other four horsewomen on the card. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks came back. We know you can, like we say, never trust Randy. When it comes to titles, don't trust Sasha. Beat the hell out of Bianca. Says she wants it back. 
We had this single match for SummerSlam. Uh, everyone remembers WrestleMania night one. They were the main event of that. Eric, who do you got in this match? All right. This is probably going to be my bold one here, but I'm going to go with Sasha taking it from Bianca only because you could set up Becky versus Sasha. You have because you can keep Seth and Becky because they're married, keep them on the same same show. But I mean, heel Sasha versus, you know, over <laughs> so over baby face Becky. That would be a good match. I do. Not, I mean, that's the if that was the logic, I really like that idea. But that's my logic. But it's one of those things where they easily also keep going with Bianca because I mean she's amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was not a fan of hers on NXT when she came when she actually came up to uh, SmackDown. She yeah that one she won me over, especially that Royal Rumble performance. <laughs> Jacob, who do you got? Uh, I'm going to go Bianca Belair just because I'm not a really massive Sasha fan. So I'm saying this as just a fan only. I have no real reason behind it. <laughs> Byron, who do you got? Um, I'm going with Bianca as well. She has the hot hand. Um, Sasha doesn't need a win for the title. Um, she's accomplished a lot in WWE. So I think she puts Bianca over again and they keep riding the Bianca Belair train. Um, like they should have kept riding the Rhea Ripley train, so they can have that matchup fantasy booking match, Rhea versus Bianca, like I did John Cena versus Batista. I know we talked about that on a couple podcasts ago. Um, so I'm gonna say they keep the title on Bianca, and it's going to be an excellent match because they show their ass off um at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am going to say Bianca for the hot hand. So I'm actually kind of torn with this one because as everyone, Eric, I don't know if you know this, but uh, Survivor Series, after that match, I went on the good old Twitter and said, Bianca Belair needs to win that Royal Rumble, the one coming up. I don't care what happens. She's proven to me she needs to win it. So I've been writing that since 2020, November, or however long it's been. And then she won the Royal Rumble and won the title. Life was good. but. I, we all know there is that buzzsaw of when you are one of the four horsewomen and your time is up and their time to take their titles back. Byron, you brought up Rhea. Her time was cut a lot shorter than Bianca's. Like she tapped out. Yep. Yes. She but, did. Yep. But that was the Charlotte Flair. Sasha, though, she does do the job when the job is necessary. So I am going to take. Bianca, and then I am going to steal from Eric's thing because it'll be new blood. I think this is where Becky comes back and challenges Bianca for the Ooh. title. Because Becky never lost her title. She had sure. to give it up because of pregnancy and for your thing to be on the same thing as her husband. So if they want to bring their babysitter too. It's a lot easier for them. Well, also, it's uh, SmackDown's on phone. Big bigger audience you want to keep the producers there happy yep i agree so i'm gonna go bianca um i wouldn't be surprised if sasha won but i'm going bianca shout out to the four horsewomen all right the main event of the show uh the champ the tribal chief roman reigns with paul Heyman going up against john cena uh we all know Cena had the return of returns of Money in the Bank. I uh, got like a million views in like six hours. Um, he, we, but they've been promoting the Summer of Cena tour, which has increased tickets by thirty and or forty percent. Uh, I, I know it's wild shit out here in these streets, um, but <laughs> this is the Tribal Chief, who I shared something with. Uh, Byron, that Roman has not been pinned since 2019, um, which is wild. And he's been the tribal chief. He's This will be a year. He's had the title for over a year. They have been building this match. I mean, the poster, everyone's going to be into it. They're having this SummerSlam in theaters. Eric, mm-hmm. what are you expecting out of this match? This thing's going to be 
It's going to be huge. When Cena's mm-hmm. entrance hits for that main event, the crowd's going to go crazy. What do you got, man? Oh, I mean, this is going to be a solid, like, 30 to 40 minute match between the two of them. Like, Reigns is literally at the best that he's been in his entire career. And I have to acknowledge him as my tribal chief because otherwise I'm afraid he's going to beat me up. We all send the Usos. <laughs> so, well, with the Usos, all you got to do is offer him some Bud Light and they'll stand right. out. <laughs> Go get it. <laughs> but yes, oh, uh, tribal chief. You're my tribal chief. Uh, <laughs> Roman Reigns. I mean, he's going to win. I mean, it's going to be like there. It's going to be a great match. The story the match is going to tell is going to be phenomenal. But I mean, there's no way Roman. Roman's going to hold on to that boat until he figured out what the next big plan is because it because nothing's higher than Roman Reigns right now. Him and his, you know, what did uh, Cena call him on Friday? His big marshmallow teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he called him that a trivia question. I'm... Oh, he, he also, Cena brought up Dean Ambrose and CM Punk. I mean, that's... Well, that's my favorite part when he said, maybe I'll leave here blowing a kiss. And I just sat there, I was like, I would love that so much, but I don't see him doing that. Nah, but he barely had the balls to do it the first time. <laughs> I yeah, I don't. And the thing is, I think Cena's taking it easy on him with promos because that's 2017. He killed him. Yes, one of my favorite promos by Cena when he said, "I'm here because you can't do your job." I was like, "Oh boy, let me sit up." Well, then- I mean, <laughs> <laughs> because because Vince had his vision of Roman Reigns, Roman had his vision of himself. And we finally got that now with the tribal chief. Mm-hmm. And yeah, way to prove Vince wrong. Even though Vince will always tell you, no, this was always, this has always been. It's good shit, pal. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, I mean, yeah, Cena proved them both wrong when he also said, man, it's called a promo. If you want to be the big dog, you've been here four years, dude. What are you doing? And I was just like, holy shit, dude. Are you oh my serious? God, I love that pro. <laughs> and I was like, I've never seen a top star go on it like that. Jacob. I know you're going tribal chief because I know your dream was he's going to hold this title until the rock. And then the rock's probably still going to lose to Then after that will be the person Roman drops to. But yeah. what are you expecting out of this match? Cause I know you're going tribal. Oh yeah. Um, I'm expecting, you know, possibly some spares, maybe some Superman punches, a Paul Heyman looking very concerned for a minute, a couple of days. I, uh, F you, uh, Attitude adjustment. What else am I missing here? As a five knuckle shuffle. Uh, that's what I'm predicting for this match. Not. It, you don't think Cena's going to go all out like what he does against like an AJ Styles or CM Punk? He could. He very well might, but the truth of the matter is, I. Everyone going into this match knows, and even for you, because you're the biggest John Cena fan on the planet. Oh, biggest. Even you have to <laughs> acknowledge the fact that. Roman Reigns is Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns is going to do what Vince McMahon wants, and Vince Logic says Roman wins. So it's predictable. That's what sucks about this. Like, I'm not trying to be, like, the negative Nancy over here, but, like, going into this, it's super predictable. Roman yeah. wins. And, I, I, God, I, it's kind of – it's annoying. Just straight up, it's annoying. Byron. I want John Cena to win and get his 17th title at SummerSlam when the crowd is super behind him. I don't don't remember the last time the crowd was this into John Cena. Maybe back when he first started, like his first WrestleMania win against JBL. Um, but the crowd has been popping for John Cena ever since his return. And I love that for him. Like I want John Cena to win, but Vince Logic says Roman Reigns wins. Because like Eric said, he's had the best, he's been red hot since he came back at SummerSlam last year. I said the tagline was, you won't see it coming. We didn't see it coming. He came, speared Bray and Braun Strowman, and it's been red hot ever since. Um, so I'm going to pick Roman to win, because last time I bet against Roman, he uh, proved me wrong and won. So uh, I've learned my lesson to bow down to my tribal chief. Acknowledge him. Um, Acknowledge uh, Roman Reigns. Uh, he is probably going to win. It's going to be a great match because John Cena can go. This new Roman Reigns can go. So it's going to be a good match. All right. Well, first off, disclaimer for the people, obviously, that we're recording with cameras on. 
uh, Byron seen it, and for Jacob and Eric. Um, over there is the Royal Rumble when John Cena won his 16th title with a piece of the ring in there, just for disclaimer of how big of a fan of John Cena I am. As people have listened to the podcast, people knew I was such a big fan of John Cena, I told him not to come back to this shit. So, because this, I didn't want my guy getting tarnished by this hot garbage. So, Summer of Cena, Vince Logic, it has done us. It has made them a lot more money, which that's why I also didn't want John Cena to come back because I didn't want Vince getting more money that he didn't need. As a person, John Cena has been red freaking hot this summer. He's had two number one movies, Furious 9, and just right now, Suicide Squad, which is still the number one movie in the world. Um, so he's been doing well. Peacemaker. Um, he's letting Roman Reigns say what he wants because Nikki Bella was brought up in that promo. So Cena recently, uh, SummerSlam is not his best pay-per-view. Since he, since he foolishly went over against the Nexus in 2010, he was on a seven to eight SummerSlam losing streak, where though he only has one SummerSlam win in the past couple of years, and it was against Baron Corbin. So it's already not his best thing. But Roman Reigns, tribal chief, acknowledged him. I, I don't know about him saying he's the greatest of all time. I, I don't think that's. I think that's far but from the truth. He is the head of the table. I will make sure he has that seat. He is the head of the table. <laughs> But when Cena came back and we all saw Roman's face, we were just like, damn, I'm not the biggest thing in the company right now. This sucks. But (laughs) look, man, I would love to be able to because I would love to buy a new plaque that John Cena beat Roman for the 17th. Like I'd buy it that day. I actually probably drive to Connecticut and pick it up just in fear of them losing it because, you know, mail's been poop since COVID. But. Roman Reigns is going to win off his second spear, not the signature one where he stands in the corner and hits him. It's the one where he bounces off the rope, comes there. He's going to spear Cena. Cena's going to lose. Roman's going to walk out. Cena's going to get a standing ovation for taking the L off the screen. We call it a day. Pains me to say. Might change it. Maybe I'll put a might change it at the end unless something happens. Like Roman wants to take off because of the new COVID variant because he was gone because of COVID, but came back in the heart of COVID, which makes no fucking sense still. But yeah, Roman Reigns is going to win. And shout out to John Cena doing it the right way for part timers because John Cena has wrestled on every dark match and the live event since he's been back. Mm-hmm. That, is the, that is the way. If you're going to be a part timer, release wrestle. But yeah. So. When Roman wins, I guess this is just open for everyone. Is seen well, he's when will Cena come back? Because like what's there That's left for question. him besides winning 17? I know there's some dream matches, like Cena's Instagram is a freaking puzzle. Like if you talk shit about him, he'll post your picture on there. Like when him and Carrie and Cross were having and Scarlett were having their thing and he just posted the CM Punk kissing thing, which was great. Like, what does he do? Because WrestleMania is in Dallas, 102,000 people. No offense to the people there. They ain't selling that shit without him selling it out. So mm-hmm. what are they going to, what do they do with him? Have him return the Rumble and win it. That'd be, wow. That would, I mean. That I would see. tie him for Stone Cold for the most. Mm-hmm. Wow. He most- t- Ooh. Most wins, and then, you know, depending on how things are going, he can either, you know, like, if they can't get The Rock, reign Cena 2, WrestleMania for the championship. Or, you know, have, depending on how things are going on Raw, he could take on whoever's champion there. It's one of those things where, you know, you put Cena in the mat in the Royal Rumble, and you have him win it. It's one of those excuses to print money because you guarantee him a spot at WrestleMania. Jacob, what do you think he's going to do after this? Because he'll obviously be back. He loves this stuff too much. He'll be back, but he won't be back till. Well, hold on. You said they can't sell out AT and T without John Cena. Not with their current roster, no. No, but they're going to have The Rock, and yeah. as as big as John Cena is, he's nowhere near The Rock when it comes to star power. Well, he has to show. Well, we have to be confirmed that the. I know we think he's going to show, up, but if he doesn't show up. 
Dude, I'll, I'll make that bet all day right now. You're not going to think he's going up. In Dallas, you don't think he's going to wait a year till Hollywood? No, no, because I think Cena's going to show up at Hollywood. Well, That's Drew, what I think. I think you're going to have the Rock at this one. You're going to have Cena at the next one. And then Drew after that. <laughs> well, I was going to say, the best, <laughs> the best thing about the Rock, Roman, you don't need the title for that. You yeah. could just have those two fight for, you know, literally for the head of the table. For the head of the family. And that will be the main event of whatever WrestleMania mm-hmm. it is, obviously, because yeah. The Rock doesn't even need a title to main event, as we've seen yep. with him and Cena. But I don't know. But man, if Roman, like when Roman wins, because he ain't losing anyone else this year, that's we're gonna be talking close to the 434 days of the Brock Lesnar 500 plus days as champ territory. I mean, that would be insane if he actually reached. Brock Lesnar status. Who's gonna be beat that record? I don't. I don't know. I don't understand. I mean, Drew McIntyre. I told you this. I think it's gonna be uh, Finn. I think Finn and it's gonna ooh. have a part in this match. Like I don't think this is gonna be clean. I don't think it's gonna be clean because Cena interrupted Finn. Like this. Like you know, the story wise, it was gonna be Roman Finn and then Cena interrupted. But then Baron attacked Finn first. Baron did too. So I think they're gonna get involved, and I think that could lead to a Finn. You want to talk about printing money? Do a Demon Balor versus John Cena at WrestleMania. Ooh. That'd be Finn's biggest career win ever. Or Demon uh, Finn versus Roman Reigns. That's what I want. That could end the title. I I wanted to end the title. Like, I think when he got dropped, when he came back and went to SmackDown, I think instantly in our group message, we're like, Finn's going to be the one to do it. Just don't know when. I don't know when. It just, like you said, depends on if The Rock comes back or not. Jacob, you're friends with him. Call him. You're right, y'all. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I think I think you are all wrong. I don't think it's going to be The Fiend. Or not The Fiend. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be The Fiend. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 not not a, it's not The Fiend. It's definitely not Valor. I, I honestly think it's going to be Cesaro. It's going to be the one who beats Roman. Get the hell out of here. Don't, don't, don't break my heart like that. I'm going, I'm going in as a fan. <laughs> this is a fan. Not, as a, a fan. not as a mark. Not as anything else. I think it's going to be Cesaro. They didn't even let Cesaro win the Seth Rollins feud. Yeah, I know. No. They're going to build him right back up. And he won the first match. He, up he won the first match and then lost then the lost subsequent the matches after that. Mm-hmm. He lost at, was it money? That, no. He lost a qualifying match at Money in the Bank. Mm-hmm. For Money in the Bank, yep. Yeah. Which yeah, that's is... right. He did. Yeah, for Vince booking. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Vince booking. They don't apparently they like Cesaro, but they don't like him enough to put him in a championship. I mean, they did match. put him in a championship. It'll, match, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be at Mania. It'll be after Mania. It'll be after Roman beats The Rock. But you watch. There's my bold prediction. Take it or leave it. I'm taking Dominican Finn, but Eric, on your Drew thing. Mm-hmm. There's only been one time in this tribal chief thing for a split second where I really thought Roman was going to lose, and it was against Drew at Survivor Series. Yep. When he hit that second claim war, and I was like, holy shit, are we about to win? And then the interference happened, so it wasn't even clean. But for that split second, I was like, this is why I love Drew. But yeah, he could do it, because he said him and Roman have unfinished business if WWE remembers their own storylines. They don't. <laughs> You're right. They don't. But I mean, they also have great in ring chemistry together. They, they do. Yeah. They every do. time they wrestle, it's a it's a certified banger, as kids would say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I like I like the Cesaro versus Roman. I like Demon Finn versus Roman. I like uh, Drew versus Roman. I just I don't know which one they choose because. They all would be phenomenal matches because I'm a big fan of all three of those competitors, especially Cesaro, because I think he should have been a WWE champion by now. But. Yeah, he, he needs to win it. Like, this is ridiculous. And he re-signed, which I know we were all shocked, but he needs to get one soon. Or, like, why'd you re-sign for four more years? Right. Money. Money. Lots and lots of money. Well, also, I mean, the WD, WWE sells easier on him. 
as for a lot of wrestlers. That's true. That's true. I mean, I mean, he's not going to have to worry about a Domino's pizza cutter to the face. <laughs> God, no. Jacob, I do want to ask though. So, I know you're 100 percent Rock's going to show up, but I'm gonna just if he does not show up, and let's say John Cena is not at WrestleMania. They're going to fill AT&T Stadium with Roman Reigns and Carmella on the front of the pamphlets? Oh, uh, no. No, not Carmella. I just picked, I just picked Carmella. I picked Carmella because that was the name I was looking on my other screen. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you, know, you know who you could pair with Roman Reigns to put on top of that card? Charlotte. On the pamphlet? Charlotte. Tessa Blanchard. Uh, there, there, we go. there it is. There we go. <laughs> it's in. There it is. Uh, no, I I think it's going to be The Rock. Um, if it's not The Rock, and it's, I don't think it's going to be Cena. Mm-hmm. But let's say it's not either, then it's going to be Brock. I mm-hmm. forgot he was even on the ship. Like, I forgot all about him. No, I want Brock versus Bobby, damn it. <laughs> well, there you go. You can possibly get Brock versus Bobby. Mm-hmm. Even though that evil was the was. rumor initially for this mm-hmm. one, because remember mm-hmm. this was, was going to be like the most lit SummerSlam of all time, because the ratings were going to be up. They were going to be up, up, <laughs> up, up, up. <laughs> if it's up, if it's up, and it's up, and it's up. Fire, where's Becky Lynch, bro? She's supposed bro, to be here. She's supposed to been back since Royal Rumble. They keep teasing her, and I'm mad about it. She's going to send a picture on Saturday, like, "Oh, I'm in Las Vegas. What's going to happen?" I'm like, like, you're watching your kid in the back, watching your husband. So, right. Uh, but the yeah, rumors are the it's gonna she's not going to come back and tell the draft. So, yeah. That's depressing. She should have been back. I mean, like, she, I mean, you can see uh, the Money in the Bank match, uh, Charlotte versus Rhea. They were screaming Becky. Um, oh, and that she's was a, great. She is the, flipping off the Yeah. <laughs> She is the most over woman that WWE has that is not on television right now. They need to capitalize on that, especially since fans are back. Um, I don't know why that happened yet, but we all know I'm a Becky stand. I would love for her to come back and Becky versus Bianca would be a great match. I would probably root for Bianca. Um, but yeah, they, Becky needs to come back. It's not going to happen, but <laughs> no, that's not happening. What I'm about to say ain't going to happen unless Jinder Mahal gets the title back somehow. But if John Cena wins 17, where do you put him all time? All time? Like just ball. We're, we're, I mean, we've done reviewing, previewing SummerSlam. This is just SummerSlam questions now. Where do you, what do you do? Like 17, longevity. Where's he at all time? Top five? Has to be top five. Oh, top three. Top four. I'd it say is. he's on the rush more for sure. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And then as soon as we say this, WWE will do their top 50 male superstars of all time. And then oh, I can't, <laughs> can't freaking wait. <laughs> that women's one. Eric, did you see the top 50 women's of all time? No, I didn't see that one. Oh my god. Byron, you gotta send Eric the link for what we oh god, that was bad. Listen, if you're if you're gonna be on the podcast, you have to listen to every wrestling episode. <laughs> <laughs> we did a whole freaking episode on this, Eric. I'm disappointed. We did. <laughs> well, we now did. Eric's gonna be on him now. So well, he's gonna be on this. So he's Byron's gonna have to send him the link, like, hey, this is your episode. Share it with yep. people. We're trying to do some things on here before the end of the year, you know, because we're about to actually we're actually going to hit our year anniversary podcast wise next week or this week with the very first episode that came out to from Mitchell Oso. So our year's coming, man. Long ride. Our year's coming. But any other crazy wrestling questions we want to hit about SummerSlam before we sign off? Crazy wrestling. Is there any su- surprise surprises? Ooh, that sounds a good question. Eva Marie showing up, fucking something up. I mean, she, <laughs> she already fucked up, dude. Drop. I mean, fuck. She wants to on. manage Brock Lesnar when he comes back. I was like, let me turn off Twitter for a day. I saw. I saw that. Or Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she has the baby one. Park. Does he show up? Parker no. Mm-hmm. No, no, he didn't. Shit. 
He's sitting down there in Triple H land. Is it even Triple H land anymore? Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. Oof. Yeah, oh, no. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying, the recent rumors is that there's a power struggle. Oh, no, there is. And Triple H is dead smack in the middle of it. Yep. I'm fed just, up. I'm to see now I'm pissed. Because look, <laughs> Stephanie, do something and get your freaking dad. Like, I don't know. Talk to him. Where's Linda at? Like, here's, this is, here's yeah. the thing. Vince is not going to retire. Vince is going to die on the job. Let's be honest here, guys. And well, sign from a lack of trying. Shit. Right. <laughs> I think I don't, I think he's going to I think I still think they're going to sell. Oh, oh they're going to sell. That's what. And I don't but, think Vince is going to die on the job. I think he's going to retire and be friggin' set. But to he's who, already set. Who is going to buy the damn yeah, more thing? Set. Disney. Fuck no. No. Way. Yes. Fuck Univers- yes. No, no way. They're- NBC Universal. You already bought the network. Just buy the whole thing. Oh, you brought that, it up. Thank you. Now there's the sense. nope. There's the thing. What if Peacock starts fucking up again? <laughs> there we Let's go. go. Oh. What, what do you expect? I'm gonna well, pirate the freaking stream so I can watch for the shit that I pay nine ninety nine for. That was the worst thing I've ever seen because the network would never mess up like that. Mm. At the beginning, at the beginning, it did. At the beginning, but yeah. not after it got better. Right. Well, that's good, only because you know they're actually opening up more markets for <laughs> Peacock. So that's why they, the servers weren't couldn't handle it. That was embarrassing when they tweeted like, "We know about the issues. We're trying to fix it." Like, oh, that was so embarrassing. I know. I miss all the cool entrances. <laughs> yeah. I and still want to know how my pirate stream streamed better than the actual stream, though. Jacob, you can't be saying that on a podcast. What if one of them listen? My myth, my uh, <laughs> totally <laughs> wild pirate screen. Right. I was just mad that it happened after Charlotte winning the title. That pissed me off. Like, really? God said, we're going to make sure you see the queen. But these other guys, F them. Literally missed half of the money in the bank match. Because <laughs> they wanted to put the sh- title on Charlotte again. <sighs> But yeah, NBC would be a best because I think NBC would still let them talk to people like ESPN because they still go on ESPN shows and all that. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, doesn't Disney have NBC? No, I know Disney has ESPN, which is Disney uh, owns. I ES, know the ESPN, joke is everything ES, owns ESPN and ABC, but not NBC. That's Universal. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm tired of Disney. Disney still buying it. Wrong, Martin. I mean, technically, no. they also own Fox, so there's that too. Oh, well, well, yeah, 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 yeah. F them. But all right, <laughs> Eric, end of the episode. You made it through your first one. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Uh, I, I was totally waiting for you guys to just boot me at one, at one point. Just be like, you know what? No, enough of this fantasy booking. Get out. <laughs> no, I, again, I, I was fine. nervous. You were going to say, um, I thought you were going to say one of your favorite wrestlers was Chris. And you know who? And I'm like, oh, that's too bad. We can't have that. Uh, <laughs> no. I know there's certain subjects we don't touch. That's one of them. <laughs> Why am I confused? Byron, you ain't going to get us canceled, bro. We'll, we'll talk after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but Eric, shout do your last shout outs, plugs, and then we'll and then we'll go. I ahead. mean, thank you all for listening for this far. Uh, I am Eric Muller. I love talking wrestling and movies. You can hear me do that at Ramble On About Movies, part of the Off the Rails Network. <laughs> awesome, Jacob. Uh, well. You guys can hear me on the Level 7 Crew podcast <laughs> on the Level 7 Network. And uh, thanks for listening to the L7C. L7C. <laughs> Byron. Uh, Becky, come back. It's it's time now. Just, Becky, come back. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's been too long. We miss you. Come back. The fans love you. Obviously, love you more than Charlotte, even though Charlotte does not like that at all. Um, but Saturday, yeah. already predicting it. I'm putting it out there. Um, but yeah, check out our other episodes on the L- lovely L7C podcast. Um, we just reviewed NXT earlier today, so listen for that one. Uh, and we'll be back for the SummerSlam review. 
Uh, that'll be fun. Let's see what matches piss us off. I if Sheamus wins, I riot. Well, Eric, thank you for thank you for having me coming on. Uh, since you do a movie one, you definitely got to get Byron on yours. Just saying, definitely got to get Byron on yours. Um, thank you, Byron and Jacob. As always, we love doing the big pay per views together. And my final things: we already talked about Tessa. Uh, it ain't gonna happen. Um, that woman is so toxic; no one's gonna touch her. Which we want her on, so we could be like, "Hey, girl, we'll help you get a job." But, <laughs> but my final things, obviously, gotta go to my guy who's gonna take the clean. Well, I hope it's not clean. I hope there's some interference. John Cena, prime example of what a part timer does. When you show up, you wrestle at everything, and you've done that. Bill Goldberg could never. Brock Lesnar could never. Rock could never. Yep. When you came back in Money in the Bank, you shot the wrestling world, put the jolt in it. I'm going to be angry when you lose, but I understand. You're doing the right thing. Roman's going to talk shit. And then, Roman, we're going to have you come on the L7C one day, hopefully, when we're big enough. And I'm going to tear you to shreds. So. <laughs> I will I will guest star on that one and I will acknowledge him. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I I'll Roman's not immune from the L7C podcast, Mr. Suffering Succotash. He's not <laughs> he's not immune from this podcast. Well, that being said, John Cena, happy you're back. Summer of Cena is gonna end at SummerSlam. You made Vince money. Proud of you, buddy. And with that, this is the L7C podcast. Take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.